Hey everyone, I'm back with another House of the Dragon video. This past week I saw some interesting initial concept art that was done for Vagar prior to Season 1. Constantine Sakaris, who was a dragon designer for the show, revealed the different looks that they were considering. What I find most interesting is that they were contemplating giving Vagar horns, or as it appears from this shot, maybe one horn, with the second one being misaligned or having been damaged at some point, probably during battle. This definitely gives a more rugged and gnarly kind of look. It's a little weird to see here because we've already grown accustomed to the Vagar we saw on the show, but I think giving her horns could have worked, but it just kind of looks off in this photo. I don't think the one-horned look, though, would have been any good. One thing I'm glad that they excluded are the teeth that are protruding from her jaw. I think that makes her a bit more feeble than ominous, although this shot, which has the teeth more compact, might have been able to work. From doing videos during this season, one thing I noticed a lot in the comments section was that people's biggest complaint about Vagar was that she should have been larger. Book readers focus a lot on the description of Balerion being able to cast a shadow over entire towns when flying over them. And Vagar at this point in House of the Dragon is nearly as large as Balerion. The concept art, though, definitely presents a larger version of Vagar than what we saw on the show. You can see a human figure in these diagrams, which is presented to provide scale. And I think Vagar in these designs would have satisfied most of the people that thought she should have been bigger. So I guess the question is, why didn't they make Vagar this large? Well, my guess is they felt it wouldn't look good visually, that the rider would appear too small, and that great scene where the young Aemon bonded with and claimed Vagar might have even looked a little ridiculous. This is where a writer like George R. R. Martin has a lot more latitude when he's in the creative process. After he vividly describes things, we can see them in our mind's eye while we're reading but sometimes such images don't present as well on screen. And with all the time and effort they put into the season in making the dragons look different, the great attention to detail, and in some cases the uniqueness, you have to feel that if it could have been done in a way that would present well visually and feel realistic, that this talented CGI team would have done it. It's not like Game of Thrones where they ended up pretty much discarding the direwolves because it was too costly and time-consuming for them. And speaking of Game of Thrones, one other issue is that Dan and Dave made Danny's dragons much larger than they should have been for their age. So that tends to be a comparison point that people use when they assess what House of the Dragon is doing. But I think we're getting a more authentic adaptation of the scale and design on House of the Dragon. Anyway. I thought this concept art was really interesting. It demonstrates, too, how much thought they put into it all and why we got some extremely well-designed dragons in Season 1. I'm really looking forward to what they're going to do with Vermithor, Aegon's dragon Sunfire, the Blue Queen Tessarion, and I think the most highly anticipated one by book readers for this next season, the Cannibal. I previously did a background video on Cannibal that I'll link below. In other news, the filming for Season 2 is set to begin on March 6th. Previously, we knew that it would start that month, but it had never been revealed if it was going to be in early or late March. It's good to see they're starting right up front, and I think that makes a spring 2024 premiere date very realistic. I know some people were concerned when they heard that pre-production was starting late January in the UK because originally the talk had been that it would begin in October of last year. Some thought this might delay filming, but I wasn't too worried. During the height of COVID, production crews became accustomed to doing so much remotely. So I think now it's easier to streamline things in a way that they're able to maximize their time and decrease the need for some in-person pre-production. I'll be covering any important filming or casting news as it comes out. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you're interested in more House of the Dragon content, listen to Caraxes and subscribe. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you soon.